Today I'm uh, installing a new air conditioner, okay? So I'm going to try to go over the steps that you need to do in order to install an air conditioner. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is disconnect the power. Uh, so I've gone inside already and I've turned the breaker going to this AC off. Uh, we have another one beside here which you can't see in the in the uh, the screen but uh, that's what's making the noise so what I'm gonna do first is uh, I've got the power off and uh, I'm just gonna touch these together to make sure the power is really off okay so that would have sparked if it would have had any power on it so now that I know for sure that the power is off let me try to get this camera over here so you can see all right, so I'm going to take these these two legs here. This is L1 and L2, which is 120 each for a total of 240 volts, okay? So I'm going to take that loose, and then I'm going to take the ground off, okay? So I'm going to disconnect that. All right, and then I'm going to take, I'm going to loosen this nut up. We're going to be replacing this wire, but so I'll just I'm going to just break that off of there. There's no real need for any of this, and I'm not worried about if I hurt the wire either. So I'll just break that out of there. Okay. Now that's the high voltage. Over here we got the low voltage. So we got two little wire nuts. Okay, I guess you can see that. So we'll pull those off and uh, this is our low voltage coming in right here. So I'm going to pull out that and uh, so it'll, it'll, if it's trying to call, which it's not, it might give you a little tingle, especially if you're sweaty. Okay, so that does that. All right, so we got the high voltage and the low voltage off now. I've already got the refrigerant out of the system. Okay, now if you have a if you don't have a reclaim machine, then uh, you'll probably have to borrow one or something from from an HVAC. I don't I haven't seen them for rent. I'm not saying you can't find them, but I haven't been able to to find them that are rentals, but you do need to recover the refrigerant. It's uh, EPA law that all the refrigerant be cut recovered instead of just uh, set loose into the atmosphere. So that's a no-no. All right, now what I'm going to do is I don't want to get any trash in these lines and I'm going to cut these okay so got a little uh, little rigid uh, cutter that works good for these things so I'm going to get it as close up there as I can and I'm just going to cut that off so down just a little bit so you can see better get these wire nuts up out of the way there's no point making a trash bin around here All right. so now that we got them cut loose what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take I'm gonna well I'm gonna pinch them but then I'm gonna uh, uh, tape it up and wipe it down so I'll be right back okay I'll move the unit away and I'm just gonna I don't want to get anything in there even though I am going to be blowing these uh, lines out <laughs> with a uh, 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 solvent it's called uh, R11 Pro Flush and it's made specifically for cleaning 
the oils that are in this old refrigerant, the R22 refrigerant has, um, what it is, it's, uh, it's mineral oil, okay? Now, the new refrigerant, which is the R410A, has, uh, R410A has polyester oil in it, okay? Now, I haven't totally crimped it off, especially that one's not totally crimped off. So I don't want to crimp it off where it won't give me a decent flow. Matter of fact, that might be a little bit too much there. Okay, so I want to I want to let the refrigerant flow uh, flow out and the oils and all, but I don't want to I don't want to do it. Uh, where there's no pressure so I want it to build pressure okay so now I've got the unit back a little bit and I've got the lines cleared or cleaned off sort of okay so I'm gonna move the unit on out of the way all right now try not to hurt the grass too much all right, now that we got the uh, unit out of the way, I'm going to back this camera up. All right, and we're going to move it on up here. And then we'll move this, uh, move all this stuff out of the way. Okay, now. never found a snake under these things, but I don't like to be just sticking my hand up underneath there at the same time, so. Tell you what, I'll just uh, go ahead and clear, clean this out, and then I'll. Okay, guys, I got it. Uh, I got it leveled out. 
the best I could. I put the bricks on it in the front. Uh, that helps prevent erosion uh, off the front edge, especially when you're a little bit on a hill like this. So. Yeah, so that's pretty level. Alright, so that's, that's where it's going to sit. So I'm going to go ahead and get it in place and I'll be back. Hey guys, I didn't want to put the, uh, the new unit sitting there and then use the solvent and blow the uh, solvent all over my new unit. So what I decided to do was go ahead and do this uh, flush the line first. Okay, so what I'm going to do, what I'm doing right now, this is a bottle of nitrogen and uh, I'm hooking this hose up to it. Alright, and I've got this, this comes in a kit, it's called a Pro Flush Kit and it's an injection tool. Okay, and this actually is what contains the solvent so I'm gonna put uh, they say to use a half uh, of the big can for a system up to like four tons so this is pro flush and it's R11 flush is what some people call it so we're gonna add a half a can of this to this right here Okay, I've kind of gotten ahead of myself now that I'm doing this. I realize I, I haven't even cut the lines yet. So I'm going to go ahead and add or put the cap on that because it will evaporate. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and get the cap on that too. Alright, so we're going to tighten this down. I'm going to turn the valve off. I know the lighting is awful up here. I, and then you look on here and it's going to give you the flow. Okay, the flow is that way. So we're going to put this hose on this side. Okay. And then we're going to put this hose on this side. Now, I hope the heck you can see. Alright, so anyway, now this has got a little uh, valve on it with a... a a gasket seal all right so we're going to just sit that there and get it out of the way so I don't knock it over all right and I'm going to tighten this on up so that doesn't evaporate all right now I'm going to take my cutters and I know the lighting is bad but I'm just doing the best I can okay so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this line off the old evaporator coil because we're going to be replacing this coil. Okay. So we're going to cut this loose. This is, that's the, the big one is the suction line, which is vapor, and this is the liquid line, it's three-eighths, and the suction line depends on the size of the equipment. Most all equipment now has a three-eighths inch liquid line. Uh, some of the older stuff only had like a, five sixteenths a lot of them did but just about everything has three eighths on it now all right now that I got them cut loose I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna lower this down so maybe you can see a little better so okay so we got our we got our bottle here 
which what we're going to do is we're going to put 150 psi on this this tank okay so I'm gonna start screwing in the the um, the regulator and I'm gonna put it up to 150 okay Ooh, not too high all right so now I'm gonna I'm gonna come over here and I, I want to get this I want to get this on here really good so that I don't spew it all over the place. Okay, I'm going to get that in place. I'm going to turn this on. Okay, now I'm going to hold it and I'm going to shoot some in. Okay. And it's going in. I'm just doing it a little bit at a time. Alright. Now I'm going to let that sit. I'm going to turn this back off. Probably not necessarily turn it off, but I will. Okay. And we still... Yeah, we've got 150 PSI there. Okay. So now, I'm going to put some in there. In this one. Okay, hold it tight up against there and open it. All right, and we'll go back to the other one. Go ahead and use the rest of it up. It's about empty. Well, it's a little bit more in there. Okay. Go back over here. This stuff is not cheap. This, uh, that, that large can of this stuff is like fifty dollars so it's not not a real cheap thing to do but problem is is the the mineral oil is not compatible with the polyester so you have to get if you can do one of two things if you if you can't do the pro flush then you got to replace the line set so this is in the attic and this thing runs down into the basement and then goes up underneath the crawl space. We don't want to do all that. So we're just, we're going to flush these lines. So that's that. That's, it's flushed out now. All right. So I'm going to uh, go back outside. Okay. We got the, uh, we got the lines flushed out and, uh, already pretty much dried up out here it's, uh, it's a really expensive uh, solvent I, I don't know I mean, it seems like a little bit too pricey really but uh, you know it is what it is all right so we're ready to uh, we're ready to put the unit up there so let me go ahead and uh, let me go ahead and get this thing out of the box all right so I'm gonna turn this all right so I took the cap off of this the other day I think this unit got hit by lightning and uh, I say that because it's unusual to have two problems in uh, at one time, uh, especially this type of problem. The motor is shorted to ground, and also the compressor, even though it's not shorted to ground, it's uh, over amping. And uh, I think I think the uh, lightning may have uh, eat the windings up in this thing, so. 
I'm gonna get this out of the way first. All right, now. Here's our new unit. And we pull the cap off to start pulling that little tab out. Okay. All right. Now we've got a... There's two five sixteenths screws that hold this in place. And I'm going to save these screws because they're good to, uh, for installing my electrical disconnect box. They're perfect for that. So, I'm just scoot it this way so I can get this off. And you just lift this up and then it, it's got two little ears that hold it. All right, so I'll set them over there. All right, now that we've got that ready, I'm just going to lift this thing up a little bit, get it out underneath there. I'm going to spin it. It's going to be a little bit tall getting it up on there. Let me go ahead and move this around. Okay. So I'm gonna try to just just walk it up on that, and then slide it on there. Okay. Now let's come on around here. All right, this is the, the business end over here, so we're going to get some stuff out of the way. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and move the camera back into the back area. Bear with me a minute. Trying to give you a good view and get this done at the same time. So, okay, there we go. Now, what I want to do, this is actually pretty loose inside there. Okay. Now, just main thing here, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. Let me get over here. Main thing you don't want to do is, is kink this line, okay. So I've got it turned this way, and now it wants to, I can feel it, it wants to kink right there, okay? It didn't kink, but it wants to, okay? So we're going to, this is three-quarter. Uh, you know, honestly, uh, we're going to have a little bit of a restriction there, but without turning this into a major ordeal we got what we got what we got the only other option is is to run a new line set because this is in the house and we can't get inside the walls the only way you could do that is to to run it down the outside of the house And uh, we don't want to do all that. So I'm just going to cut this back a little further now that I got it all blown out. Okay. I didn't realize it wasn't in place. So, all right. I'm going to cut this this tip that I kinked off, okay? Alright, that's that. Now, we're going to scoop the unit back a little bit.
Okay. And we want to try to center it up on the pad the best we can. That's about right. All right. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my pliers and I'm going to pinch this so that it'll be tight. Okay. And that'll help allow the uh, the heat to flow all right now not quite long enough there I've got some more tubing so I'm gonna go ahead and get that and we're gonna cut this off a little bit back and add a piece of tubing onto that First thing I'm going to do though, before I do that, is uh, I'm going to sand some of that uh, I'm going to sand some of this crud off of this, this old piece of copper. Doesn't have to be that clean because uh, silver solder is actually pretty good stuff. It's you don't need any flux or anything like that. But I don't like to go with it that dirty. All right, so go ahead and cut that off. So, I'm going to go ahead and get a, let me, I'll be right back. Let me get a piece of, okay, I'm back. All right, so I'm going to cut off a piece of copper that'll fit between there. And uh, I'll have to do a swedge. Uh, you can do couplings, but. Honestly, I like swedge, uh, swedged fittings better, fewer joints, and uh, I think that's always a good thing. Um, so what I'm going to do, I've just got this, I don't have a, a really good quality swedging tool or swagging tool. Uh, so, let me be Okay, so I got my swedging tool, and I'm just going to take and get that started. All right. I don't mind using this tool on this small stuff, but uh, it doesn't work too good on the big stuff. It'll actually start going through the side if you're not careful. All right, so now what we're going to do is we want this to be, I think I'll just make it about that long. And I always cut some off. It's hard to, to stretch this copper without a major tool <laughs> copper stretcher all right now I'm just gonna kink this old one off and then that way it won't get any trash into that okay so I'm gonna go in here all right, and that's all cleared up. All right, now I'm going to go up and go in. Just 
just like that. All right, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna just take this and tighten it up just a little bit. Okay, now, now this is brazing rods, and this is 15% silver. Uh, so I'm going to put two little kinks in it. All right, get that ready. So I'm going to move this out of the way. Get that. I don't want to be burning that up. All right. And I'm going to take the uh, Schrader cores out because we don't want to heat this thing up too much. Uh, these valves do have seals in them. And it's a good idea to take a wet cloth and lay over the top of these valves. Because you don't want to heat that valve up too much. If you burn this, these O-rings up inside here, you're done. Because there's, you can't get that out. Uh, so, I mean, you know, it, I've seen them leaking before. I mean, you can generally, you can seal it up with the cap, but... It's just better not to overheat the thing. All right, now, this is my core removal tool. This is actually, um, this is actually a pretty cool tool. This is called a Schrader core. And if this core gets to leaking, which it will do sometimes, the cool thing about this tool is you can replace the the core, so what you do, you put this on, you unscrew the core, you pull it out, you close the valve, you take the thing apart, you got the core that catches on to the end, you pull that off, see it actually, it'll, it's got some sort of little retainer in there that kind of holds it, okay, so then you, you change the core, put this back on, open the valve, push it in, and screw in a brand new core. So that's a pretty cool tool. These are about $40. But right now I'm just using it to take these new cores out without burning them up. And I'll just put them in there. All right. And I'll just set that up on the disconnect box. All right. So we got the caps off. We got the cores out. We're pretty much ready to, to uh, weld this up. All right. Let me get my torch. Alright, now this torch tip, this is just regular map gas. You can buy this stuff at the Home Depot. Now this tip, this is kind of an expensive tip. I've had it for a long time, so it's kind of seen better days, but this tip is, oh boy, I'm not going to be able to read it. But anyway, it's, it's a pretty good tip. It, you can you can turn it, and I, I have had it for a long time. Okay, now the only thing I'm forgetting about is I need to get a wet rag, so I'll be right back. Okay, I got the wet rag in place. Start my torch up. Okay, get this in place. Trying not to burn up the unit too much. If I can help it. It acts like it's still got gas in the line, but I don't know how it would have that in. 
I blew it out with nitrogen and that blood, uh, throw flush really having a hard time getting this to get hot enough for me.
Okay, I'm back. All right, I'm gonna try this. Uh, I got this side welded up pretty good already, but I haven't. I haven't got the other side. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try just laying the torch down and let it do its thing. I've noticed this torch, if you turn it up too much, somehow or another the flame, I think, uh, it's, it actually runs hotter when it's not full blast. one more time. I just got to get that other side. I think this side over here is already welded. inspection mirror and once you think you've got it and you inspect it all around that joint make sure there's no holes or cracks or anything like that and don't touch this thing until it'll it'll first it'll be like a brown uh, and then it'll turn black so don't ever don't ever touch it until it turns black. Let me get some more water. When I, when I say don't touch it, I mean don't move it. Don't uh, try to, to uh, wipe it or anything until until it turns black because you can actually create a leak by doing that. 
So I'm going to just keep that covered up now. And this one over here, let me show you something. Let me take this off and I'll try to show you this. This is, this is so crazy how these things, you see that little hole in my mirror? Okay. Now that's, that's going to leak right on top too. Unbelievable. So, but you see everything else looks pretty good. Just right on top. It didn't quite get. And then over here, see you've got, if you take your inspection mirror and you look around, you can kind of see same thing here. Okay. See that. I don't know if you can, how well you can see all this, but that's, that looks to me like that's going to seal up. So we just need to hit right here. Okay, unbelievable, right on the front. Could be a problem, but it seems to be. Uh, I mean, right on the top of the little one. All right, so I'm just going to reheat that. And these little lines, they're, they're nothing to, uh, to weld. They heat up pretty fast with this stuff. Those big valves, though, they're kind of tough. Okay, so we'll uh, we'll reinspect it. All right. So see now we got it all sealed up good. All right, so I'll go ahead and wipe that down. All right. Now. We'll take uh, first of all I'm gonna fill this see how hot it is that one's still pretty warm okay so we'll just leave that up there uh-oh I'll be back okay guys now what I'm gonna do is I am going to go ahead and start wiring this thing up. So first thing we're going to do, I haven't put the Schrader cores in yet. Um, we'll just let that valve continue to cool before I do that. So we're going to be vacuuming the system down so we're not worried about air or anything getting into that. Or well, we don't want any water in there, but we'll have it sealed up here in a few minutes. Alright, so here's our contactor. This is our run capacitor. Um, here's our low voltage coming off the sides of the contactor. This is a single pole. Uh, well, it actually holds two poles, but only one.